Today's video is brought to us by the USCCA. The United States Concealed Carry Association has a lot of training and education for all gun owners, new and seasoned alike. They have a lot of uh, education that you might be looking for as far as what states have reciprocity with your permits if you have a permit. Uh, they also have firearms classes where you can better yourself, you can be more proficient, and even become an instructor. Check them out down below. It's uscca.com slash gng. And as a member, you get self-defense liability insurance which God forbid you have to make the decision to defend yourself or others in an act of armed defense, lawful armed defense, uh, you will have somebody that will have your back in court. And uh, for me, that's what I use for my family and I strongly suggest you check it out. It's a money back guarantee. It's uh, down below, uscca.com slash G and G. Let's get into this video and I'm gonna bring to light some more stuff uh, related to the the dirt on the NRA, um, I, I've been reading the lawsuits, and I'm, I just I can't do it all in one sitting, so I chip away here and there. And uh, last night, while I was trying to fall asleep, I was looking at more of it, and I did this more of that this morning as well. And I uh, mean, it's it's disgusting with with what uh, the NRA has been doing on the inside as far as. Uh, what could eventually be determined to be misappropriation of funds. Again, there's several lawsuits uh, with the, uh, the the biggest one that everybody knows about is the one with the New York State Attorney General is looking to destroy the NRA. Uh, a court just did throw out the uh, the attempt to, to dissolve them, so the, they stay they got away from the life sentence, but they're still facing a lot of issues. And, uh, you know, when I do these videos, I've done a lot. There's a whole playlist of NRA videos above. Uh, I'm not doing this because I want to bury the NRA. I want to do this to bring to light some of the stuff that needs to be fixed so that if they do remain around, uh, hopefully it can be done right. Um, absolutely, people who are in charge need to be removed. And if you uh, read some of the stuff from the lawsuits, um, it spells out pretty well who needs to go and who needs to go quick. Uh, I got some notes that I took while I was looking it over last night and this morning. And uh, I'm going to bring you a couple things that I was reading that made me, like, shake my head. Um, it's interesting. First off, if you remember that Oliver North was the, the head of the NRA for a while, um, back in 2019, in April, right around the time of the annual convention in Indiana, in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, he was he stepped down. He was forced to resign. Um now, Oliver North is, a lot of people find him questionable as well, but he discovered a lot of the stuff that is coming to light in his lawsuit, yeah, and uh, he was asked, or he stepped down. I don't know the internal part, but uh, he's no longer in the position he was. And after the fact, the NRA, <laughs> it's almost like they hated his ass so much for calling him out. Uh, they tried to, they did, they, they're suing him to remove his life membership. Uh, and Oliver North is saying he's protected by the whistleblower um, statute, uh, but they are suing to remove him as a life member. Now, is that a great use of funds to sue somebody in court, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to remove their $700 one-time payment life membership? I mean, that's, that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but that case was stayed uh, meaning it's been paused uh, pending the outcome of the New York Attorney General lawsuit. And I just thought that that was hilarious, that they would be willing to spend that kind of money to sue somebody over a 750, or actually Oliver North's probably been a life member for a long time. Uh, back then it was like 400 bucks. Um, but either way, clown show. The next part that caught my eye uh, and, and these these answers were filed uh, in response to AG questions or allegations in the lawsuit. Um, it says that Wayne Lapierre admits that in May of 2017, his wife was appointed to the board of directors of the National Park Service Foundation and that over the next few months, he submitted expense reports requesting expense reimbursements for trips taken with his wife to National Park Service Foundation events in Alaska and Arizona and that it and that this was in addition to the expense of flights used to get them to the uh, NPSF events. So these aren't NRA events. He's flying places with his wife. She's getting paid by, assumably, she's getting paid or reimbursed as a board member for the National Park Service Foundation. And he's asking for reimbursements from the NRA. And, and it gets 
it, it gets a little more questionable. Uh, there's some trips to Africa that uh, he got reimbursed for uh, when him and his wife, or he and his wife, uh, were going to uh, the filming of a safari under uh, for a group called Underwild Skies. And there's more, a lot more. Like it's there's, a, there's money being thrown around by this organization, or there was, um, at a at a rate that is unfathomable for somebody who in the past had sent money to this group so that they would do what we all thought was the good, you know, the good fight, which is why I say always support those who support you. And uh, to see how they mis misappropriated the funds got, that they received from the membership is just disturbing. And then the next couple things I'm going to tell you, like if you're, when you think of somebody who needs a safe house and an armored car, if you had to pick five people who needs a safe house and an armored car, would Wayne LaPierre be anywhere in there? See, for me, it's not. Uh, he wouldn't be because he's not that damn important. Uh, he is, he's just a figurehead. I mean, uh, <laughs> the battle for gun rights will always go on with or without Wayne LaPierre. But Wayne admits that he and his wife looked at several houses in the Dallas, Texas area for possible use as a safe house from time to time. The NRA then admitted that the Ackerman McQueen CEO proposed to acquire an investment property in North Texas and allow it to be used as a safe house for the LaPierres. NRA admits that in the wake of the Parkland tragedy, following advice from Angus McQueen, that a safe house should be established. Mr. LaPierre and his wife reviewed several properties selected by Ackerman McQueen's real estate broker. The NRA admits that an Ackerman McQueen executive sent an invoice from WBB Investments LLC in the amount of $70,000 bearing the referenced annotation. And you remember there, was, there were rumors or whispers about a $6 million mansion that the NRA was using as a safe house. Well, I guess that comes out in court right there. Also, the NRA admits that an armored vehicle was procured for the protection of Mr. LaPierre. So, I don't know. Maybe this is just me and my rough sense of humor. But when I think of people who need that type of protection, you know, armored vehicles, safe houses, I think dignitaries, heads of state, presidents, um, high value targets, I don't think of Wayne LaPierre. Um, and that's just, and that doesn't have anything to do with the downfall of the NRA because of things that he's, you know, done and, and is apparently getting caught for. But he is just not that damn important. I mean, I've been shoulder to shoulder with him at events, trying to get him to, to you know, come on the channel and do an interview, which he won't do. But that dude, I mean, he has armed security with him, but he's not that freaking important. Um, but I guess I just wanted to bring this to your attention and show you how far out there they've gone. Uh, and uh, want to hear your input down below. What do you think about this? I'm going to say this again. I've said this in numerous videos. The size of the NRA is valuable. The lobbying that they do, uh, the NRA ILA still does a lot of good work. It's separate than what Wayne was doing, but they're also in cahoots with money issues. If the NRA goes away, there's a huge void, and we're seeing the void now, and we're seeing you know companies jockey and do more and, and fill in that gap, but the gap, the void created, if and when the NRA does go away, if they do, um, it's huge, it's astronomical, and curious on what you all think. That's what I got for you so far this morning. Uh, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun, and keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.